co-creating a world filled with positive possibilities while leading by example, My Power of One takes a stand for kindness. In The Wizard of One, Sue Vickery is joined by new guests in each episode to share inspiring stories and challenge the listener to continue transforming humanity one word and one act of kindness at a time. Be sure to stop by MyPowerOfOne.com and join the movement at MyPowerOfOne on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hello, and welcome to The Wizard of One, A Magical Journey of Kindness. I am Sue Vickery, your host, and today we are we are brought to you, by the way, by My Power of One, and Heartland Films is executive producing this. Again, my name is Sue Vickery, and today I'm in the studio with Angela Holt. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for saying good morning to us. <laughs> I, w- I wanted to just give you a really quick uh, synopsis of how I know Angela and why in- I invited her to be on the podcast today. We live in the same town, mm-hmm. uh, Mountain City, Kansas. Um, are you going live with this? Oh, the end. Okay, so she's cliff- <laughs> cliffhanger for sure. We live in the same town, of Mountain City, Kansas. Uh, Angela has lived in the town her entire life, as as well as her family, generations of family members, and and um, and we and Jay and I bought a farm there um, twenty seven years ago. So Angela and I've worked together creatively. Uh, she was a screenwriter for my recent film, Original Jay Hawker, uh, which is a historical documentary about our town. And uh, she got the task of writing the screenplay, her first screenplay, I think. Correct, mm-hmm. Angela? Yes. yes. So our relationship is, is connected creatively. But today we're going to talk to Angela about autism. And um, the uh, podcast will air April 2nd on Autism Awareness Day um, and I invited her on the podcast because she is a mother of an autistic child, and and I felt like I wanted to know. I mean, the word, the term autism is is every you know people read about it and maybe not understand it, but I felt like I wanted to understand it, and um, I wanted my audience to be a little bit educated about it. it seemed like a fair um, opportunity to do that with. So, welcome, Angela. Yes. Tell me how you're feeling today and how are you? Have you been nervous? You've been up to the studio before. So tell mm-hmm. me about how you're feeling about being here. Eh, a little nervous being in the hot seat, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last time I hear it was Daniel. So, Daniel yeah. was up here doing some recording with us. Yeah. And, and uh, so uh, let's talk a little bit about, let's start with um, maybe help us understand sort of the umbrella scope of autism because it's a pretty broad conversation, I think. And so tell us, give us a little bit of sort of uh, education on um, autism and autistic human beings. I mean, you have some that don't even know that, you know, you would never know because they, how can I put this? I mean, I don't want to say normal, but you know, they, they still talk and interact, but they may have other things going on in their mind. Um, And then it goes clear. I mean, the spectrum, so they spectrum. call it. Yeah, the yeah. spectrum. Mm-hmm. And there's some that are just so severe, they can't communicate, they can't um, do much of anything by themselves. I mean, we're pretty blessed with Jonah. His main thing is he's non-speaking. You know, um, we can use the word non-verbal, but you've heard, you've been around him. You know, he's he definitely um, makes vo- voices, you know, in his own way. He voices things not anything that we can understand most of the time, but at Adam and I, you know, as dad and I, we, we've come to learn a lot of his language, his own little language. We call it, you know, his little Jonah speak. Um, and occasionally he'll speak, he'll say, he'll just pop out a random word. Like one day we pulled up to my brother's house and he shouted out, Kevin. And mm-hmm. so he was really excited. And I told my brother, I was like, you should feel very proud of yourself, you know, but he said your name. And then, but there'll be some. There'll be nothing for months where he he won't say anything that we can clearly that we can understand for months, and then he'll just uh, the a couple weeks ago he shouted, that, "That's mine," you know, and then I got this, and so I mean it's just kind of weird how he, but he, I mean even though he doesn't speak to where you can understand, he definitely 
understands things. I think that's where a lot of people don't don't get a lot of times is just because someone who's autistic, who has autism, they um trying to, sorry, I'm trying to articulate. They may not have the words, but to talk to you, but that doesn't mean they don't understand what you are saying to them. Right, or the situation. And then mm-hmm. luckily he has an older brother. So oh, yeah. So he's got some sibling, mm-hmm. you know, relationship. And uh, tell us he uh, his age and tell us, um, you and I talked a mm-hmm. couple of weeks ago about when he was two and a half and you started to notice things that weren't developing mm-hmm. normally. Take us a, a little bit back to the beginning of you guys uh, checking it out further and coming right. up with that educational thing yep so he's six almost seven he'll be seven in in may and um yeah he was around two ish it's been long enough now like it's kind of fuzzy you know it's kind of always been this way now um but he had been doing some speech and everything and then all of a sudden he just i don't want to say like it was a light switch but almost like he just kind of that word regression is used a lot in the autism world and he did it as he became a toddler. He regressed in a lot of communication, nonverbal communication, you know, things. And he would become, he had a lot of meltdowns back then because he couldn't communicate and we couldn't understand what he was wanting. And um, he'd be playing with toys. And, you know, sometimes kids will throw a toy or something if they're upset with it when they're real little. But this was different, it, especially having Daniel being a few years older. We just knew this was, it wasn't. Right. Something out of was, the norm. Yeah, it yeah. was out of the norm. And so, yeah, we uh, went through the rigmarole of going to different specialists, specialists and specialists okay. and then getting him diagnosed. OK. And is there yeah. is there a specialist for that field or what is it? You know, what are the how does one research that or what what are you looking for in your in your doctor? It can be complicated, especially mm-hmm. in small time, small town, rural community. You don't have a lot of resources real close. Um, there's a lot up here in the city, up in Kansas City, that we haven't had to go into at this point. Um, because I mean, he's his physical health is good. Physical health. I mean, mm-hmm. he's extremely motor <laughs> motor skills or fine motor skills are excellent, and and broad motor skills. And I mean, we keep telling him like if he reaches certain milestones, he can start going rock climbing there because we had the rock climbing gym in town and because trust me if he can climb out of something he will get his way out of it oh. okay yeah yeah he's been a bit of a wanderer or you've had mm-hmm. to kind of take some locking the doors and fencing the backyard and things like that to yes. keep safety is yes or... we have the fortress yes mm-hmm. <laughs> um yeah lock gates you know and and our fenced in yard and then extra locks on doors and 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 as I, we were talking the other day, I mean, he, we used to have, there was a time we had to lock the refrigerator. Yeah, that's right. And lock the pantry and lock anything that had a food source or what he thought might be a food source. Interesting. I mean, he's a skinny little thing. I mean, you got to think his metabolism is probably right. super high. And But he was always wanting food and he didn't understand that some things you couldn't have or, you know, or else he'd just throw it on the floor and we'd have a huge, right. <laughs> huge mess. Um, he's kind of grown out of that a little bit more he's matured enough to where he understands hey this drawer in the fridge is my snack food I can get out of this and and he's going to be seven in May is uh that right yeah and tell tell us about the educational component and because I know depending on the spectrum and all Uh of that mainstreaming is possible but tell us about your choices for his his learning and education um there's luckily we have a few choices but not a lot uh our school district that we live in has a co-op with special education with, is it a total of eight schools, I believe, in the area? And so for preschool, he w- he went to Pleasanton for two years to that special preschool. And, and that was Marissa. for children with special with needs, special I needs, guess you, you would know, say. Yeah. Okay. yeah, just maybe some of it was just speech, some of it was more for autism Mm -hmm. or just developmental developmental Mm -hmm. Uh and then uh and you have so many meetings with this you have what you call ieps i i'm individual education plan and um you just meet with the teachers and you go through everything you know it's not Mm -hmm. just going in for a parent teacher conference like hey 
they're doing really well with this, but they need to work on it. It's, it's a little more complex. More complex. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot to wrap your head around, though, isn't it? Oh, it is. I mean, yeah. it's, you're barely learned to parent to begin with, and then <laughs> and then this is a you know, right. pretty good learning curve for right. you guys, it is. both of you. Yeah. And then, so for kindergarten and then now first grade, he has gone up to, he is transported up to Lewisburg every day to okay. what's called life skills. Five days a week. Five days a week. And he's really just started to, you can you can tell all that extra because he has an OT, a speech, you know, they they do, they have all the specialists and they do all these extra is it in a facility? Thanks. Is it in a home? What's the? Um, it is in one of their elementary schools. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah. how many kids are in the class, or do they all have all different versions of um, needs? I'm trying to think of how many they do have. I want to say all his age is sure. Yeah, all between all between kindergarten and second grade, and oh, okay. so then after next year he'll transition to something else, and I don't even. You're not sure yet. Ah, uh, yeah. That's that's another year away. I don't want to. Right. I don't want to. Yeah. Peg down what he's going to do next year. Totally. Yeah. Um, Just kind of like moment by moment, make the best decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, that takes a lot of um, uh, guessing. It does. And, uh, you know, you and your husband, Adam, being on the same page for things and mm -hmm. communicating, you know, obviously for the best of the family and the best right. of Jonah and, and, and both the boys, really. But, I mean, you're probably kind of constantly... You're probably not checking yourself, but you're kind of mm -hmm. constantly having to stay up to speed on, you know, giving him the best opportunities to oh, become yeah, a young adult and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and develop to the best of his ability. Right. Yeah. Right. You really, I mean, it's kind of like you have a, you have all these different scenarios. You keep all the different scenarios in mind. Well, if it goes mm -hmm. this way, then you're going to go this way. You know, you, really? you just, okay. I don't know. There's You try to think ahead a little bit. Right. Yeah. A hundred yeah. different strategies. In right. Use. Well, as you know, yeah. parenting in general, even with Daniel, is guessing. <laughs> it is. And, yeah. you know, sometimes you guess well, sometimes you don't. And that, that never changes all the days of your life. So right. I guess that's the good news and the bad news right. when you think about it. But with right. autism, is there a way to understand, is it is it a couple of things we were going to talk about? Is it a genetic thing, A, mm -hmm. and I suppose there's various theories about that. And oh, then yeah. secondly, is um, um, is there uh, is it a brain vulnerability or where does it originate it's definitely you know a brain you know it's mm -hmm. it's all in something, something developed not the same right. as mm -hmm. um and i don't know i i personally feel am on the camp of those that believe autism has a genetic component to it um others don't mm. and it's you you can go down so many rabbit holes in but the, those that the don't, do they think it's just like a gene thing at birth? Or, I mean, I don't, I don't know. know enough about it to have an opinion. But I kind of be careful when I'm reading through all that stuff because you can get down rabbit holes that take you into so many yeah. far-fetched. That's kind of pointless. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's, I don't know. Well, I guess yeah. there's too much yeah. information and there's just the right amount of information. There is. Yeah. And, you know, you need just the right amount to make sort of day to day, mm -hmm. week to week, month to month decisions right. for his care and safety right. and, and development. And I mean, you got to think like with a, a lot of children with autism have other things going on too. Like a lot of, there's a lot of ADHD mm -hmm. and a lot of. ADHD, yeah, don't they do it. some medication for that? Mm -hmm. What about autism? Are there... There's no one. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's probably a good thing. Oh, yeah. I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And we we keep pretty low on, right. on that, especially right. as young as he is. Just try to keep what he's ingesting healthy and, mm -hmm. you know, not have any mm -hmm. triggers with his food or things like that. Because right. you've got the whole night time to get through, too. And you yes. kind of said that he's a little... It's a little challenging to keep him in bed and... Mm -hmm. And that whole night, because you guys oh, need yeah. to sleep too. I mean, you both have jobs and <laughs> right, you know, and right. functioning. And, and that that is one thing, because I mean, some of the best things I've learned through the last few years is just what I've what I have um, read from other parents. Mm -hmm. Yes, and from from people from adults who who are autistic. Existic, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, sleep is like a common. Very common challenge. Yeah, uh -huh, very common challenge. Right, and you can tell, like when on nights he can't sleep, his little brain is just going ninety miles an mm -hmm. hour. 
and he can't sleep means you can't sleep. No, right, or one of you has to right. be sort of around. Because he, yeah. he will find something to get into. And right, <laughs> yeah, it's almost safer to have him in between the two of you or which, something so that you can. Which happens quite, you know. I bet, but it it has like in the last year he's finally, and even in the last few months he's, it's almost like a switch is flipped, mm-hmm. and he's understanding. What this, bedtime? This you know, is like nighttime. Time, this yeah. is nighttime, mm-hmm. and and this last few days with spring break and everything, mm-hmm. kind of off, off the off schedule. Off the schedule, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's been a li- not real late, but he's he has gone to bed a lot earlier consistently mm. in the last. Yeah, yeah, I think you said he was months. staying up till midnight, or there was midnight some, one yeah. two, uh-huh. or he'd mm-hmm. get up at he'd go to bed at eight o'clock, but then be up at two or three and stay right. up and right. Those were hard days. Yeah. I, does Daniel, your your older son, Daniel, who is he 11 now? He'll be 11 next month. Okay. So is he uh, is he the reverse of that? Is he a good sleeper? Is he in the commotion? <laughs> is he an instigator? How does how does that second sibling sort of deal with all that? You know, sometimes it doesn't help sometimes when he's like all full of energy and mm-hmm. then wanting to do, you know, uh, and, and being loud. And it's like, no. That was not the time. You know, you need to, you know, just go chill. Calm but usually, things down, yeah. Usually he's pretty chill. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know you know him, and he's, he's... Is he a good sleeper? Yeah, he doesn't like to go to bed, but he... He can conk he, out. He'll conk out. Okay. And, well, yay to that, at oh, least, yeah. yeah. And then he'll be one that just randomly wake up at 5.30 in the morning, but he... He, he can be on his own a little oh, bit. Yeah. yeah. He, even when... Oh, my gosh. He's been like that for a while. I mean, he's got that... He's that typical oldest child kind of thing he's just very independent once he figured out how he can make cereal on his own you know or get yep. any other kind of food or beverage then he'll just go turn on tv and right not bother us right so not like we did as kids i mean oh you know, yeah we got up and sat in front of the cartoons and, oh yeah you know got mm-hmm. lucky charms or whatever it was we <laughs> ate you know in our in our era oh yeah uh captain crunch was big when i was growing oh, up yeah. by the way yeah he loves those lucky charms too yeah those yeah. are good too. Oh, yeah. they're colorful yes uh all right so we talked a little bit about the your di- the diagnosis of mm-hmm. jonah and um and uh oh we were going to talk about explain to us what aba uh oh. is and how it helped you and your family okay so aba ther- it's a therapy and it's one of the most common it's used pretty much most everywhere and it's it's pretty much it, 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 they start out with just giving the, the child two choices. It starts really young, and then they are re- rewarded for those. Now, we've talked before. I don't want to get too much into all the history, you know, because it gets pretty murky but and dark. But and the, there's lots that don't like it, that experienced it, but it has evolved over more. Like, I've never seen anything negative out of what Kind of like Has behavior it. mod in a way where they, yeah. their, their brain can take this or that. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. But now that he's getting older, I mean, he's he's so much more independent. I see. You know, he he still uses and in school setting, and there's definitely times you know to learn what what you need to do and what you you know what you, and to make choices. It's just I don't know. Well, just gaining it's, experiences with each year, he probably learns what what benefits him or what right. the family reacts to or something like that right. just like any kid is learning you know in those those early oh, years oh yeah yeah cuz the back in the day like they they would be there might be a mild punishment if you know he didn't do the right choice i guess you could say right um but used in the in like a consequence cons- of some sort right yeah right but if it's just you know hey would you like um this cookie or this right tweet? right you know, Right. And just trying to get Milk them to make choices. Sure uh-huh. Right. 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 And just to help get him to communicate, to I learn see. how to communicate. And we use picture cards a lot. Now we, at home, I mean, he's gotten where we know his language, you know, just his body you know, language and, and all of that. Yeah. 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 And he knows, if nothing else, he'll lead us to what he wants, you know, if he mm-hmm. can't get it or else he'll just go get it himself. So, right. As he I gets mean, uh, older and a little more independent, how uh-huh. how does discipline go? I mean, you you <laughs> talked about uh, so overreacting to situations uh-huh. and having you know sort of really inflamed right. emotions. You guys have to s- figure out your ABA part of that. Right. How to, yes, we how to get trained, it not yeah. to happen again. What what do you what has been effective for you guys? Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously you can't say go sit in the corner and you're no. in timeout because no. you know. And a swat on the rear doesn't help no, either. Right. You no, know, no, it doesn't. You know. Um, 
Is it like quiet talking, like yeah. sitting in front of him? Yep. And- and we're removing him from the situation mm-hmm. if it needs to be. Um, so we've had to leave things early or, you know, before we wanted to leave. Uh, music will help him sometimes. That's if, what you said. Mm-hmm. Yes. If I can get him to put his focus over onto certain songs, that'll help. Interesting. Like in the car down. and you're driving and oh, things yeah. get out of control, you can switch yeah. it up a little mm-hmm. bit like that. Yeah. But we haven't really had a lot of, we haven't really had any any outburst giant meltdowns no no no. he got a little upset a couple weeks ago at a thing we were in a gym and it just got too noisy and he he just got overwhelmed and i could see him starting to to feel that you know and so we just left you know yeah good just left i mean right it wasn't worth the trauma for everybody right Mm -hmm. right and then you know he he got a little upset at the library yesterday. There was a lot more kids than there usually were, and he got pretty excited. I mean, he enjoyed the what we got to do, but then he just yeah, got just, over, all his senses were probably just mm-hmm. overtaken. Yeah, it's interesting. Yep. Any advice you'd give parents? Because you know, obviously, you and Adam working on it together. Not everybody has a, a sig- significant other, right. so there's certainly single parents that are out right. there, you know, raising autistic children. Any advice you'd give to? Uh, parents or caretakers of autism, autistic children that, um, you know, you and I have kind of determined our word is compassion, you mm-hmm. know, it, until we create a new one together. Right. <laughs> um, but compassion is a, and caring, you know, understanding. Uh, maybe another one we've talked about is not like projecting your opinions on right. someone that you have no experience sort of with. The right. Situation. Yeah. Any experience you would give to another parent that um, I know it's kind of a big question mm-hmm. that is for the first time uh, has a child diagnosed with autism. I mean, in it, your in your years of experience, it's been what four years. Four now, years, so, not that yeah. everyone, But I don't know. It's in some ways. I mean, it's just we just accept it, you know, ourselves, and so that makes it a lot. I mean, if you if you don't accept it yourself, it's going to make things a lot harder. That's true. Um, you can't not really. Right. And and for us, I mean, Jonah is Jonah. And we just. Kind of a day to day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Make, he, the, make the best decision you yep. can on any given day. And yep. You guys do a good job of uh, uh, when I watch you from afar on social media, <laughs> you do a good job of adventuring with your family. Yeah, we do. I, I'm assuming you like to adventure is why you're sort of passing it out on yes. to the kids. But. You know, you do things like you go to historic events around, or you mm-hmm. go to museums today. Mm-hmm. You're going to the Puppet Museum in, mm-hmm. in Independence, you said, after this. And so you uh, allow your children to have lots of diverse, you know, especially living in a little town oh, yeah. like we do. Uh-huh. You know? and so I love that about what you're providing your right. children. Because it helps him, and it helps us, and it helps others, too. I mean, you know, but it... The main thing we do is we leave early and we try to get home early. Cause, gotcha. You know, as far as the time of the day and uh-huh, stuff like that. The, the and later restaurants in the day. too. And restaurants, yep, mm-hmm. yep. But we have never really. There's a short time. Restaurants were tough for us, but luckily for us, Jonah does you usually do pretty well. You pick the right one. We pick to the go right one. Yeah. The right time to go to. Yeah. Probably. Yes. I think. Didn't you say IHOP was really a good one? For, yeah. He likes it. Right. Yeah. And it's open all the time. So, I mean, you know. Yeah. And it's fa- family friendly. And oh, yeah. Lots of sweets. You know, oh, yeah. Go. Oh, we got it all. We can get them sugared up. So. What about like having a second child that's um, not autistic? You know, there's always this feeling of uh, there's the possibility of the feeling of the child not getting quite as much focus and attention and and Daniel's your older of your two, mm-hmm. and 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 I I know him a little bit. You know he's got a little bit of a caretaker heart mm-hmm. because of his puppets, but um, you know there's I, I've known families that have had a child that is like, not what about me, mm-hmm. but you know the focus, uh-huh. the majority of the focus is on the challenged right. child. Do you see? Do you work at that? Or is that anything that like crosses your mind as far as time alone with Daniel mm-hmm. or you know? Or you're just like, you're just a family. Whoops. You're just a family. And you <laughs> hit the mic. Um, is it anything that has, you know, crossed your mind as far as? Not really for us nuclear, in the nuclear sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's almost opposite because a lot of times Jonah gets forgotten. I see. Mm-hmm. When it's be- be- because, inside and out. Yeah. Because of functionality and you're going on your. Yeah. Okay. And well, and. 
you know, Daniel gets invited places and gets to go do this and that. And you can tell sometimes that it bothers Jonah. You know, like, why did brother leave? Why did brother get to go do it? You can tell he's okay. thinking that. Yeah, he's feeling yeah. a little left out or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Well, the years ought to be interesting as you get to the prime uh, teen years and stuff <laughs> like that. I, mean, I know you have no idea what to expect or, right. or how that'll play out. Um, right. You know, maybe sneaking out of the house will be become a full-time activity <laughs> at that age. It'll be the other one trying to sneak out. Yeah, yeah it should, to... <laughs> should, be, should be very interesting. Well, I do applaud you for uh, visiting with us today just because, mm-hmm. you know, uh, some topics— are mm-hmm. less talked about than others. Right. Autism is possibly one of them. I know. Um, and I, I, if I can share real quick, the Please. other day, um, lately Jonah has taken to in the evenings. He won't go to sleep in there, but Daniel will be laying on his bed watching videos or whatever, whatever it is he does. And um, Jonah just crawls into bed next to him, and them two, I'll peek in there, and they'll just be laying next to each other, mm-hmm. not yeah, bothering each other. That's invaluable, isn't uh-huh. it? Yeah. So I mean, you can tell with Daniel that it's. I guess we're balancing it pretty That's well. That's true, yeah. He's got the older brother thing going on, a mm-hmm. little bit of a protector and a caretaker, mm-hmm. and, and Jonah feels safe in his space and, oh, yeah. you know, all of that. So, And, and again, we're in a little town, so we've mm-hmm. got a lot of people that kind of look out for oh, yeah. others. You guys go to the coffee shop a lot. I know you spend quite a bit of time <laughs> oh, in, <yeah. laughs> in that setting, and, and that's pretty safe for him mm-hmm. to not knock over pottery and just kind of— <laughs> twirl around in the middle of it and right. lay on the ground right. and whatever else right. he does. Well, and like the other day, you know, they brought out bubble wrap for him to play yeah, with. Yeah, I saw so. that. I saw that on social media. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of spoiled around town, I think. You yeah, know. As, as you should be, as small mm-hmm. towns are really mm-hmm. lovely for that. Um, anything else you'd like our audience to know about, you know, parenting, uh, sort of the emotions maybe, or, yeah. or I, I, I'm assuming you just try to stay focused on the act of parenting. Right. An act of being a human being. It's right. just not all about parenting. Right. You know, you get to still be Angela. Right. I yeah. hope. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> totally. Know, right. Totally. Uh, um, any other bits of advice or wisdom you would give in your few years of, uh, you know, being engaged in that conversation? Um, Anything to do, not do? Is there support that's helpful, not helpful? What do you think about that? I will say, because we experienced this the other day, Jonah, as mentioned, he's a climber. Um, and he got himself, for lack of a better word, treed up too high. Up on a, a tree. Well, mm-hmm. not in a tree, but just treed up on top of the playground equipment above where you're supposed to be. And there were others in the park. And I finally, after, and you could, he was starting to get that freaked out look in his eyes. And he realized he got himself in a pickle. And it was just Daniel and I with him. And I'm not the tallest person. And I'm not a climber. <laughs> and there was a couple other people. And so I, told Daniel, I was like, hey, go ask them if they can come help. I just need a spotter just to help get him down. And they didn't come help. They actually laughed. Wow. And I'm like, wow. it don't matter if your kid is special needs or not. I right. mean, it's right. obvious we've been there for a while. Help and is help. Yes. So I guess wow. if, especially if you see a family having a little issue, mm-hmm. and especially when the kid comes and asks, please go help. I mean, that's I like just that. kind of... Yeah, I, 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 you'll be proud of me. I didn't say anything to him. I was wearing my kind, <laughs> my kind. <laughs> you were really, <laughs> yeah. Oh my I was God. like, I can't say anything Reminded. kind right now. No, so. not wearing my power one shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Sue would be mad at me. Exactly. <laughs> oh. So we did, but we just left. After, right, and he was ready to leave after that too. So. Well, and compassion yeah. is kind of the just a, a right. human thing to right. re- remind all of ourselves that not first of all, not be judgmental. Right. Unless you're you're not in that situation, so you can't really, right. you know, judge how you, they should be doing it differently. Right. And as you said, like if he's having a meltdown or a child's uh-huh. having a meltdown in a public location, mm-hmm. not to uh, pass judgment. Right. Not to uh, offer advice that's not helpful. Right. You know, kind of a thing. Right. Um, you know, because there's all kinds of situations that children, autistic or not autistic, right. would do in public, oh, in, yeah. in church, and places oh, like yeah. that. So, And thankfully for our church, everyone loves it. You know, he- yeah. <laughs> well, his dad's the pastor, so that probably helps a little bit. Yeah. Uh, mm. All right. Well, let's see what else, if there's anything else. How are we doing on time? Uh, halfway point. Okay, great. Thank you to my producer, Katie. <laughs> Katie is whimsical, wearing whimsical today. Here, my power one shirt. I'm wearing compassion. You're wearing compassion as well. Mm-hmm. Well, while we're talking about my power of one shirts, let's talk about. I gave you the task this morning to come up with the boys, 
mm-hmm. with a new shirt. We like to, with each guest, put a new My Power of One word into the brand, uh, sort of notating our experience together. You know, you've been mm-hmm. with me with the brand for a number <laughs> of years now, and we've co-created some things together. Mm-hmm. What did the boys come up with on your, you, you know, you, you claim that you're wordsmiths. Let's see what yeah. the boys came up with together. Oh, we got a list. How many do we have? Um, I'll give you the top ones here. Okay. Um, it was, you know, it was an hour drive. So, I mean, we had some time. Good to come point. Up. <laughs> and we have over a hundred words in the brand. So we'll see whether or not they're already in there. Oh, I already checked. Yeah, oh, good, through. good, good. Very smart of you. <laughs> good, good. All right. I'm ready. Okay. And let's write down a few of them, Katie, okay. and let's have them on art so we can ponder. Okay. Um, independent. Like that one. Um, it's kind of long, mm-hmm. but I, it's a good one. It's a good one. Genuine. I love genuine. I think that's in the brand. Well, maybe no, not. I no. think I had that one made for Carrie, mm-hmm. but you're right. Put genuine is good. Um, and uh, I like that you double checked. I did. That's, I did. That's so Because I had to mark a couple off. That's you know? so you. <laughs> Observant. Okay. That's, that's, that's long. Okay. Uh, persistent. Mm-hmm. I, we have Persevere okay. in the brand, but keep going. Um, the, the way they did a good job. Radiant. Okay. Um, let's see. Perceptive. Per, per, perceptive. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Luminous. Uh, the boys came up with these? I mean, my God. Well, I was reading through these, and Adam, uh, Adam helped. Yeah. Yes. I was like, hey, what does this one sound like? You know? and yeah, then, yeah. And it's funny, because with our puppets, Daniel was like, no, that's, that's so-and-so's word. And I'm like, okay, just... Stop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep reading. Um, did I say legendary? No, I love that one. I love that one. Um, clever. Clever is good. Enrich. Okay, you guys did well. Charm, and for fun we put boss. So charm, boss. charm is charmed or charm? Charm. Okay, and boss is fun. <laughs> I like the shorter, the better, right? because I like not only just one word that sort of suggests who we are that day, but uh-huh. I, I like something just really succinct. Right. So boss um, is the shortest word. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if that list, if you were to pick one word that would be totally honoring Jonah, give me your top three. I said pick one word, and then I said give me you three. Gave, yeah, but I think you gave me three. <laughs> yeah. How about... Uh, genuine. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, persistent because he will, mm-hmm, is mm-hmm, definitely and mm-hmm. independent. Okay, boss is fun because we call him the little boss. But no, I mean you know, but right. he's independent. Yeah, I think people that would wear boss <laughs> would probably take it to heart when they'd be out there <laughs> bossing people around. Which I'm sure I'd be one of those. Uh, genuine would be a good one. Did you write the three down that she that she said? Or do we remember them? I mean, can I see them? <laughs> she's <laughs> writing them down quickly. Oh, she's she's my producer is is multitasking over here. Um, genuine would be high on the list. Um, persistent, you said. Mm-hmm. That's that's certainly that's okay. She's right. Let me see. Because you already have unstoppable and limitless. 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 Mm-hmm. You're yeah. right. All right. I'm going to probably go, because the longer the words, the mm-hmm. more difficult they are to get on the shirt. Okay, she, <laughs> our, my producer has underlined, have you circled it yet, though? <laughs> circled and underlined the word genuine. So I think we're going right. to, I think that's a good one, mm-hmm. because that's probably something all of us can identify with. Oh, yeah. Is, is to be our most authentic, genuine self is, is certainly our right mm-hmm. to do that. And no matter what your diagnosis is or whatever, mm-hmm. I'm sure we all have something. Oh yeah, that being genuine is uh, is our best case scenario, oh, yeah. don't you think? Mm-hmm. And yeah. and with Jonah, I mean, definitely, what you see is is right. what you. I mean, that's that's yeah. him. I mean, he's not hiding right. anything. You know, right? He's, he's, he doesn't have any designs to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. No. He's just doing well, his best. He's kind of got the grand- <laughs> he's got the grandparents man boozled, but oh. you know, yeah, and some of the church ladies, but you know, okay. he, but otherwise he's pretty genuine. So. Good. Well, that's the word we're going to put in the brand. Uh, right. Oh, does Jonah have a favorite color? Hmm. You can ask him that later. Yeah, we'll figure out. That oh, one. yeah, or 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 check with the boys on your trip to the to the puppet museum and mm-hmm. see if you can narrow. Because I usually like to make the logo the color that goes with them mm-hmm. as well. Okay. Um, so, uh, let me know that later sometime today, and we'll put that word into the brand in the next 24 hours okay. in honor of Jonah, mm-hmm. uh, for, and you know, what, one thing we could do is a lot of the, 
the uh, awareness type things have a color connected to them, mm-hmm. you know, like prostate cancer mm-hmm. and breast cancer and all that. So we could see if there's anything identifiable. That's true. I, I kind of like that idea. It's mm-hmm. kind of giving it a double a double mm-hmm. meaning. Right. So we have successfully come up with a word together, genuine, um, that will forever remind us of this conversation mm-hmm. and our respect for um, all human beings, mm-hmm. uh, no matter what the, uh, the you know, diagnosis is. Uh, let's switch over a little bit to your passions. You know, you and I first met, I think, really in person when we started work on the historical documentary over at Lynn's house. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure if we'd met before that. I don't think we had, had no. Because um, you guys are fairly new to that house, too. Had you not moved very... Yeah, we just moved in. That's yeah. what I was uh-huh. thinking. Yeah. And we had a small group coming together as producers for this film we were going to start working on. I think uh-huh. we're at the very, kind of at the beginning of it. I think it was your first meeting, I think, well, That maybe? could be. Yeah. And somebody and... said, well, you need to... Uh, yeah. Let Angela know about yeah. it, and someone texted you or called you. Yeah, that and, was Anita. Yeah, she's and, and you, good at uh, And you tromped me. across the street <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for our first meeting yes. and stuck with us all the way through the world premiere of yes. it. Mm-hmm. That was quite a, an adventure, wasn't it? Yes. It was quite an adventure because none of us, you know, we had were working together for the first time, mm-hmm. that group of women, and not anyone had experience making a film before, right. except me. <laughs> and so everybody, well, actually, Lynn had been a producer for a number of years, right. but everybody was kind of thrown into the mix, which, you know, we love to do. <laughs> and uh, we, I think we were pretty successful with that, weren't yes, we? I think so. We did, yes. uh, we did a number of interviews around town in the historical village. And then um, before I left to go to San Diego, that <clears throat> first year, I sent you the transcribed interviews of the seven individuals that yes. we did, said, have fun <laughs> writing a screenplay for this film, and you took it on. And tell us a little bit about that process, how you wrapped your head around that. It was your first mm-hmm. foray into screenwriting. Mm-hmm. I mean, you didn't blink. You just said yes, and yeah. then, what, several weeks later, <clears throat> you had a script. Yes. Tell me a little bit about how that, um, pro- how you process that in the midst of raising children right. and all of that. Well, luckily, you hinted it to me during Christmas break. Um, so, you know, we were, <laughs> I, I gave you home. quite a pile though, didn't yes. I? Yes. I mean, yeah, like... it was, it was a pile. And well, you gave me some of the background stuff beforehand. And I mean, where I had been at all, but a couple of the interviews, some of it was kind of fresh in my mind. And you knew the people. I knew the people. Their stories. Yeah. And so I just kind of skimmed through their stacks of interviews. Then I went back, then made some notes highlighted, scribbled out, you know, did all that, and then went through to match up the historical document, you know, anything that I could pull into that to add to it and to com- complete it. But I I hadn't hardly even started working. I already kind of knew a quote in that one that started, that we had at the very beginning, the one that That described, was a great opening. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I just kind of went from there, and it just, it just kind of flowed. flowed. Mm-hmm. Did it flow? It flowed. How, how long did it take you to complete to actually write it after I... After I gave you the wad. <laughs> I had it done in less than two weeks. Wow. I think probably about 40 Because I gave you like months. I'm like, I won't be back till like <laughs> April 1st. Take your time. And then all of a sudden it's in my inbox. And it was 55 pages long. It was. Because you understood that one page per minute in a right. film. And I said I wanted the film 55 minutes long. Right. So you followed the protocol. I, I was listening to you. Yeah, you I followed the protocol I and I read it. Uh-huh. And I'm like, spot on. All right. Off we go. Mm -hmm. And then once we got in the edit (laughs) of the film and we, you know, laid everything out, then it was two and a half hours long. (laughs) Once we like put everything in there and everything and uh, two and a half hours long. So we had to cut, obviously, Uh you know, a whole bunch out of there to to make it Sue's 55 minutes. (laughs) But that was quite a that was that was pretty cool. Did you feel proud how did you feel after you how that that two and a half year experience we had together was it want to do more because you've been writing since right. you were a child right proud and humbled at the same oh, time yeah yeah you know that that, that makes you know that imposter syndrome it's like did I actually yeah. do that yeah you know yeah every experience is like that for me mm-hmm. you know I watch <laughs> some of my films and I'm like wait my name is on that right how did that happen right because, you know, they sometimes it feels insurmountable. Mm-hmm. Even with the original Jayhawker, I had mm-hmm. no idea how it was going to turn out. Mm-hmm. But you had the whole town wrapped around it at that point, <laughs> And they're like, 
yeah, when's it going to be done? You know, mm-hmm. and we, we made it. We had a pretty splashy little premiere with it. We did. We did. And I think all of us ladies that were involved with it were pretty uh, proud of our efforts. And it's mm-hmm. really a, a piece that will exist forever. Oh, yeah. It's one of the things I love about historical docks is that mm-hmm. they will last way longer than, than we'll right. be here on, on Earth. Right. So, um, but t- tell us, you've been writing, you've got your imagination, you've been writing stories since you were in grade school, as long as you can remember. It's got to mm-hmm. be one of your passions. Oh, it is. It is. Yep. Um, still, if I wasn't reading, I was writing, you know. Okay, growing so, up. Yep. And then you're still writing when you can. Yes. And working on a I got a couple, yeah, I got a romance or something. Yeah, this is, I just call it historical fiction. I don't okay. like being on the... Skip the romance part. Yeah, skip the romance. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, <clears throat> Does that have a title yeah. yet, by the way? Yeah. I know you've been uh, working on it for a while. It's, it's got one, but I don't know if I like it. So, okay. You know what I mean? Do you want to tell it to me? Yeah, or no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. That's probably good. Um, but no, I got a couple of long manuscripts written. It's just really? to go back through to do the editing is the that, hard that's part. True. That's true. That's when I need the most concentration. I mean, you can, yeah. I can. Or I to can have someone else's words. eyes on it at some yeah. point helps too. Yes. And what in today's world, do you write on a Word doc? How, how do you do it on the computer? Do you write by hand? How do you do it today? I write, I'll scribble stuff out on longhand, you know, but I, on paper, on paper okay. and um, make notes. Yeah. And uh-huh. if I do poetry, I write it in Yep. Just on paper. You're left-handed, right? I am left-handed, okay, yeah. Right. Yeah, she sees me. My daughter's a writer as well, Tracy, and she's left-handed, so that must go together. <laughs> that's what's wrong with us anyway. <laughs> no, no, that's what's right. That's what's right. That's a creative, it's a creative gene, I'll it just is. say that. It is, it yeah. is. And, uh... So you probably have notes and stories all over oh, yeah. the place. You said you had journals growing up. Oh, yeah. So you've got those sort I've got of those catalogs away. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, I just, when I'm writing, like, long stories or even just Nonfiction stuff. I'll use just the computer. I like my desktop. I'm kind of sure. Oh, I I'm see. Kinda, you know, I don't. I don't know. I just like the. You like sitting and sitting, sitting and yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but I, I wish I had a larger desk. There's never a large. True, you know, you always need true. a larger to desk. Spread out a little spread, bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And with no kids, like in the perimeter. Exactly. Because <laughs> so I'll could, say like, "Hey, yeah. I'm going to go work on this." All right. Okay. I'm going to lock the door. And yeah. then all of a sudden, World War Three erupts outside your room. Because, oh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That's when somebody's beating like, somebody yes. up, and yeah, blood is flying. <laughs> exactly, that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, well, so writing is a passion. Another uh-huh. passion of yours is history. Yes, and which is why you are just an amazing match for our project. Oh, thank and, you. And but you've been writing for the Lynn County News. Yes. For how many years? Mm. The history. Quite a few column. Yeah, yeah did the history column okay. and. That is that one, a monthly thing, or how often do you do that? Um, when there's room. We'll put it that way. But I keep, so my summers, I usually spend about three or four weeks just hunker down. Okay. And and write some Just small... write those out. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, you start researching, and everybody's related in the county. So, I mean, and I'm doing family histories, and so it's just easier just to do chunks of them at a time. Okay. You know, oh, that I way, see. You know, I mean, and that way I've got my hundred tabs open on the computer, you know. Uh-huh. My husband complaining that there's too many tabs open. And right, start, right. You know, and yeah. <laughs> but don't touch any of those. Don't touch they them. need to be open. <laughs> I need yeah. those. And, I mean, All I your research, you yeah. mean, like when yeah. you do research. And so I'll do, like, chunks of those. And mm-hmm. I, I think I have, like, two years stockpiled. So, I mean, I can take – so that way I don't have to worry about them. Amazing. So if she uh-huh. needs – has room or has, has a yep. need that you can just have something ready to yep. go. And yep. the columns, how many words are they usually? Are they – Usually – you know me. I don't keep them short. 50 um, to Usually 500 to up okay. to about 1,500. Wow, okay. Yeah, it depends on... Depending on the topic and all of yep. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, plus that, you guys go around to the museums. You spend a significant around Fort Scott and uh-huh. Lynn County visiting the museums and their uh-huh. exhibits and stuff like that. So you're pretty oh, yeah. familiar with... Local. Yeah, mm-hmm. things that are going on uh-huh. and, and all of that. But history, mm-hmm. does that does that date you? Does that go back to your... You know, your your years in school, because history <clears throat> on my list of the top mm. five things I love, it would be like 10. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it's it's not a passion for me. But right. what about for you and um, growing up? And... Well, luckily I had good, excellent history teachers. Okay. Um, so that definitely helped. But even before that, I mean. Oh, my... Do you want to name any of them? Oh, there was Mr. Beckman, uh, Mr. Oh, nice. Hunter, who passed away when I was still in high school. Mm-hmm. But but. Yeah, Miss, I think Mr. Uh, Beckman's my neighbor. Does he live out yeah, there? Yeah, he lives yeah. out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And um, any of my government teacher, Mr. Thomas, you know, okay. who is now the we might as well give some kudos so, yeah. to yeah. some of the teachers. Um, and then, but even before that, like my grandparents were great about sharing family stories. You know, they're, you know, the oral storytelling. You know, just that. Yeah. 
in and that caught your attention oh yeah you were, definitely right. and then with my imagination too running wild True. you know just but my um but my one grandparents the ones that lived by us they're in lynn county mm-hmm. they they told us especially granny would tell us stories about things that had happened long ago and stuff in the area and then and they had books you know of lynn county his you know some of those older books of right. lynn county history and i would pour through those i mean i read every interesting i would go sneak upstairs and read all the books i think i read every book really? granny had upstairs wow. but then uh, my other grandparents lived in Fort Scott, and they were, they originally, Grandpa was originally right by Prescott as well, but um, he, they lived close to the National Cemetery, and we would, a lot of times, go walking up to the cemetery, and he'd tell us all about, you know, all the different interesting Somebody things. Somebody here. Yeah. yeah, you know, mm-hmm. there's Native Americans buried in one area, and we'd go f- try to hunt and find, find those names, mm-hmm. and, or, you know, like another area of there's a line of Confederates. You know, there's just different You had little generations things. of knowledge that's yeah. passed, been passed through you. And, and grandpa, But you're also interested in yeah. it. Yeah. And that grandpa as well. I mean, he he was kind of a um, writer himself. I mean, he, he typed up family history stuff, you know, in that single spaced typewriter, yep. you know, mm-hmm. plunking away. And I mean, he did. So he did all the good genealogy research. Nice. Before the Internet. Before it was popular. <laughs> before it was popular. Yeah. And. Which has helped me tremendously, and that got me into the... That got you into that vein, uh-huh. because one of your gifts is writing. It's not uh-huh. everybody's. And your interest in history, when you merge those two together, it really mm-hmm. was a, oh, an amazing combination. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is, uh, to have found that love and passion at any stage of life is, I think, a huge mm-hmm. gift. But to utilize it and to be able mm-hmm. to, you know, put it into the world is 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 amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we did co-create uh, Genuine together, and that mm-hmm. is going to be our word forever. Let's talk about, um, oh, you're, by the way, the podcast is going to go live uh, April 2nd, which is World uh, Autism Awareness Day. So it'll be available on all platforms. You can Google the Wizard of One to find it. You can also put links on the My Power of One website, and we'll have them on social media Let's you and I co-create together uh, a random act of kindness mm. for the listeners. We've tried to mm. do that with all our guests. Um, you've been involved in many of our acts of <laughs> kindness that mm-hmm. we've done locally in mm-hmm. town. Um, I think it'd be cool to have it sort of specific to Jonah or, you know, mm-hmm. some of our topics today, their history or something. Uh, but let's talk about something we can uh, clue our audience in that would be you know, not mm. a challenge, but an opportunity. Mm. So I didn't give you time to think about no, that. You did did not. I? <laughs> no, you didn't. See how we do random. Hmm. Um, I've got a, I've got a possibility. You know, any anyone that's we all have gifts of some sort. They're all mm. different. One of yours is writing. One of yours is history. You know, <laughs> um, there are lots of personal challenges to. Help is help. Oh, that okay. This is this is a quote my producer is, is telling us. <laughs> no, I like it because she she's a, she's listening to us mm-hmm. in ways that you know mm-hmm. you and I can't hear right at this moment. Um, so l- let's talk about the possibility of the audience um, doing something concrete mm-hmm. that could be because they listen to this podcast. They. Um, you know, here's a possibility. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys talk about uh, you and Adam getting out and having time by yourself, mm-hmm. but you need the boys' care to be taken care of. And I know you have grandparents uh-huh. or parents in town right. that, that are capable of doing that. What about offering to a family that is a young, growing family mm-hmm. um, some not child care, but, you know, is there something that could benefits you guys to have a caring, compassionate, something in the community, um, that, I'm, I'm, I'm watching you thinking as we talk. Another, uh, on the other end of the spectrum, uh-huh. we could talk about your love for create of writing, creative mm-hmm. writing. Someone that loves to write like you do, they could be challenged by writing a story mm-hmm. and you know, a lot of people right. don't like their stuff read. Right. They're, they're you know, embarrassed to have somebody read their stuff. So there right. could be a challenge that somebody takes on a project that, you know, puts their gift into the world. I'm going to let you think be, about that okay. for a minute. 
One yeah. thing that came to mind, because you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, back in 2020, right. Daniel, because we were getting, we were, you know, the first few weeks we were kind of lazy and, <laughs> you know, and you were scared. You know, it was, it was an uncertain, you know, you, we didn't yeah. know what to do. And we were looking up challenges and things to do. And we, he decided to do 50 note cards in 50 days. I love that. And he did them in 30 days. You were one of the recipients to one of those cards. That he, oh, uh, a written cards. Uh-huh. Oh, I written love that card. idea. Yeah. A written card just saying, you know, you know, and he drew on one side and then he wrote his name on the other. And mm-hmm. I helped him address them so that way they'd actually be readable. And, and they got to the recipient. <laughs> so sending so, a handwritten note to somebody, uh-huh. should we add about kindness? I or think about, so. I like that. Yeah. Or I about genuine in some fashion being that's right. our word. So the, the, the random act of kindness that we'll uh, give the opportunity to our audience mm-hmm. to do is, is to write handwritten notes to, let's be, let's say, five people. Right. There we go. And and they can, you know, five people of their choice, and mm-hmm. it, it can be as short or as long as, you know, they they deem, but actually right. write it in, you know, it's, it's in a their handwriting yeah, yeah. and mail it yes. to whoever it is. Oh, that's That's fantastic. See how clever we got. There we go. And nobody sends notes anymore. And I know, I know that we, Daniel you know, does so. Yeah, because I get I a bunch of yeah. Because I yeah. try to help make sure that I write thank you notes. Yes. and stuff. That and, was big for my mom. Yeah, she, and, she had us do that. And I mean, it means a lot when you do have because we have had people. It's extra effort. Thank you. Yeah, mm-hmm. they they thank us for, especially like if it's a gift. You know, true. They, you know he. We've been, we've been told like that my donation for the blood drive. He was right. doing. He wrote me a thank you note for that. And I'm sure right. you prompted that and you yes. had him follow through on that. But yep. that's, you know, those are good training grounds for yes for people being grateful for things. Right. All right. So that that was as easy as, <laughs> you know, we, we tried to make it too hard. That was actually pretty easy. So our challenge to the audience uh, for our random act of kindness is to write five handwritten mm-hmm. notes and, and mail them to somebody uh, about their kindness to them or right. gratitude for, you know, something. Yes as random as they want it to be. Oh, that's easy. I mean, you and I both have to do it too, right? <laughs> yes, we do. So all of us yes. all of us are going to have to take that on because I, I like to take all the challenges on. Yep. Uh, all right. So we've talked about all the good stuff. Oh, let's, let's mention that Kind um, is, uh, I've got quite a few products uh-huh. on my Power of One website with the word Kind because that's our, we're having a magical journey of kindness with the podcast and we have the the code kind obviously k i n d that can be used at checkout for 25% off on any of the kind shirts i think i've got a hat i can't remember what what's on there there's at least five different things that are put the word kind into the world and so that's something that we want everybody to have the opportunity to have um, how are we doing on time we've got about 5 7 minutes something like that uh, any other uh, positive, uplifting advice you'd like. Eh, advice is the wrong word. Yeah. Uh, bits of Angela wisdom <laughs> that, because uh, you're still in your 30s, right? Yeah. What? Uh, and so, you know, you, yeah. you have, you're a mother, you mm-hmm. know, you're a working person, you're, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you've got, you wear a lot of different hats I do. just to make life go. And, mm-hmm. and you still have Angela that uh-huh. you care about, you know, having time to, right. To you know, you know, be who genuinely who you are. Right. Any any bits of advice for other women that are in a similar similar stage of um, decade of life and managing a lot of different right. things? I've been there, done that. Right. So, um, I I mean, don't be afraid to step down from anything that is take. You know, say no. Say no. Okay. Say no. So something same, you might yes. have already committed to, but then well. I was in an. I was working with a group for um, s- several years, mm-hmm. and it got to be almost. It wasn't fun anymore. Does gotcha. that make, not even. Yes, I don't want to say fun, but it, it it became more of a oh, instead of okay, and and it was taking time away from other things I needed that were more prioritized. Gotcha. And so, so you were I mean, able to communicate and be yeah. assertive enough to say, I, I want to remove myself yep. from this right now. Yeah. And it's hard because I like to help and I like yes. to. You like to say yes to yeah, things. I yeah, I do. And it is important to say yes to things. It is. And, yeah, to be engaged. Um, but to kind of choose what you say yes yes to. Yeah, make sure that it really resonates and then you can give it your time and your. Yes. Right. 
Yeah. And, and then, as you said, I like the idea of even though you commit to something, mm -hmm. a couple of years later or whatever mm -hmm. may not match your mm -hmm. commitment anymore. And then to be to use your voice. Right. And, and to be. Yeah, that, that I think that's a fabulous lesson for all people, but women, right. women especially, because, right. you know, we do a lot of wear a lot of hats and right. multitask. Uh, one last question I have for you is one of the things we're talking about with all, all our guests. You ready for this one? I guess. <laughs> I like you not to have preparation on some of our things. <laughs> is define for me the word kind. Take Thanks. your time. Think about it. <laughs> kind is just being nice to other people. Don't, I mean, just, I guess even a smile, you know, or... I don't know. It can be big or small. Kind doesn't have to be big. It can be a small thing, but it's it's something positive. Just be uplifting. Uplifting, yeah. Mm -hmm. And kind to yourself. Yes. All right. Yep. So it's it's remembering, it's remembering to, um, you know, be thoughtful mm -hmm. in relationships yep. and and certainly, I guess, certainly starts with self. Think of yeah, and and then but then think of the other person. Yeah. Think, think of the other person. Think, think of, of their feelings. And, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And use words that are uplifting. Yes. Inspirational in nature. Yep. Okay. Um, I am going to, first of all, say thank you and mm -hmm. what an honor it is to, first of all, be your friend. Mm -hmm. You know, we've we've had some amazing, um, you know, our dots being connected has really yes. been interesting. Yeah. And we've really been able to kind of weave some fun stuff into the world together. And I'm sure there's many more of those to do. Um, but thank you for educating us a little bit about autism, something I wanted to learn about. And I'm sure there's lots of folks that could afford to know, know more about it just because oh, yeah. it's in their families or, mm -hmm. you know, yep. taking it on yep. somewhere. Um, and we appreciate you co-creating a word. We've got the new word, uh, genuine. Uh, we've created a uh, random act of kindness, writing five handwritten notes and mailing them to somebody uh, about what they mean to you mm -hmm. or fill in the blank, whatever you want to write. Um, next month we are, well, as I said, Angela's uh, podcast is going live on uh, April 2nd, and it'll be on all the podcast stations. I will uh, put a link on the website, mypowerofone.com. Uh, and then I'll have it on social media. But any of the podcast platforms, you can search The Wizard of One and find. Uh, we've got four episodes now that will okay. be live in your, your episode number four. Next month, we are going back in the studio to record our May um, podcast. And the, the guest on that one will be uh, Sue Vickery, who's the host and happens to be myself. And the reason, Sue, is, <laughs> talking in third party, the reason I am doing that is because um, on May 5th, which is my birthday, I deemed a number of years ago a uh, random act of kindness day. So we're going to launch that one on my birthday on May 5th. The brand My Power of One actually launched on May 5th in 2014. So we're getting ready to celebrate our eighth year of the brand. And uh, so I will have as someone interviewing me, and it happens to be a friend of mine, Francine Filsinger, who uh, she and I have worked together on some film projects. She lives in San Diego, so she will be Zooming with her in the studio here at Real Media KC in Overland Park, Kansas. So we'll be recording that uh, the end of April, and that will air on May 5th on my birthday. And Francine's, I told my husband this morning that Francine's goal in that interview is to make me cry. <laughs> And my response to her was, good luck with that. <laughs> if that happens, uh, I don't, yeah, good luck with that. I think the only thing she could get close to that would do that is me talking about my grandson, Miles. Mm. So we'll see what she comes up with. She's pretty, <laughs> she's pretty adamant that she's going to get that done. So we'll see how that, how that works. And mm -hmm. my producer, Katie Laporte is here. She's keeping us on. She's got her whiteboard. She's sending us uh, notes about what we're forgetting. I've got a script mm -hmm. in front of me. But thank you again to Angela Holt for visiting with us today. I know she's scooting on to go to the Puppet Museum. Oh, yes. Uh, her boys are, they go on almost nightly walks around our town of Mound City uh, with puppets, and yes. then, um, and then, <laughs> as a matter of fact, you guys produced a uh, a uh, what I don't know how long it was a minute or two minute long video with puppets yeah. for the opening of um, the premiere. 
Yes. And and, and that was nicely produced and oh, nicely edited fun. together. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, Daniel's getting to be a little bit famous, I think. <laughs> And uh, so, all right. Well, I think uh, we have about less than a minute left. Mm -hmm. uh, any final words you'd like to say about genuine or about our act of kindness? I'd like you to sort of take us out. I think would be a good idea. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> You've done a great job, oh, by well, the thank way. Thank you. Thank Aren't you. Aren't you glad that it's like the oh, hour is yeah. about over? All right. One oh. last, one last, you got about 30 seconds. One last, like, sort of shout out to somebody in your, that was... Uh, mentor or someone that you're thinking awfully hard I know. I know just everybody I mean I mean everybody in your life is is a um and becomes your inspiration whether positive or negative you know so there's so many that have helped us through the years become who you are yeah 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 well, again, I love our friendship, and um, I'm going to have those genuine uh, uh, words. Oh, the only thing you'll owe me, and we've got we're right at eleven o'clock, but the only mm -hmm. thing you owe me is a color for the logo. All right, so we'll you get, get it. to me the by the end of the day. All right, we'll give him some choices, and he will show us which one he wants. There we go. Let's we let's go. have Jonah pick the pick the color, and we'll yep. have that in the brand in the next twenty four yep. forty eight hours. Yep. All right. This is Sue Vickery, host of The Wizard of One, and we will be with you again uh, in about 30 days. Thank you, Angela. All right. Thank you, Sue.